from uh, let's read from the gospel according to Luke chapter 24 and verse 13 Luke 24 13 by the grace of our Lord now behold two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Amos which was seven miles from Jerusalem and they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was why they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained, so that they did not know him. And he said to them, What kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? Have you not known the things which happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. <clears throat> Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him they did not see. Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us, on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us. So they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together saying, The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told about the things that had happened on the road and how he was known to them in this breaking of bread. Now as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed him his hands and his feet. But why they still did not believe for joy and marveled, he said to them, Have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding, that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it is necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Amen. <clears throat> I 
Our Lord is risen. The women who were looking for him saw him. But the two, Cleopas, who were disciples of Christ, and possibly Luke, because often when they write, they don't, they don't record their name. They heard, and they didn't understand what was going on. Disappointed, because they were hoping that salvation was going to come from Jesus, whom they finally saw dead on the cross. They heard. They didn't believe. And disappointed and desperate, they returned to their hometown. They couldn't go on the Sabbath day because it was around 11 mile, 11 kilometers, and it was permitted up to five. So they returned to their village the next day. Sad as they were, disappointed, as men are who have not understood that Jesus Christ is risen. I want to repeat this thing. Sad and disappointed are those who do not believe, who have not understood that Jesus Christ is risen. In other words, it is not excused for the man who believes, who has known Jesus Christ risen, to be sad and dis despaired. You can't be this way. Disappointment and despair is not excused. It is not permitted. Christ is alive. Christ is the Lord of all hosts in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Man, the man of God cannot be disappointed and desperate. If he is, he does not believe. And if he does not believe, he does not find grace by God. For that reason, my dear brethren, we believe. Amen. We believe. And if we believe, then the joy comes through the power of the Holy Spirit into our life. Because no matter what we experience, no matter what happens in our life, no matter what our eyes see and our ears hear, we know that Jesus Christ is our Savior. He's our Redeemer. We know that nothing is impossible with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen, my brethren? We know this thing. We don't believe it only. We know it. We have experience with this. Christianity is, a, is an experience. It's not a theory, no, nor is it theology. It's experience. We have this experience that Christ has risen us, that, we, that He's begotten us again. We cannot forget that Christ baptized us in the Holy Spirit. And we know that every time that we pray, Christ fills us with His Holy Spirit. And when we are filled in the Holy Spirit, we fill up with the power from heaven. Despair is not a characteristic of a Christian. The person who is desperate and disappointed is dangerous because he brings disappointment to those who are around him. And the person who doesn't serve, who doesn't work, he gets disappointed and desperate. When you do not serve God and when you don't seek Christ and you do not want Christ, then the sure thing is that he won't find you. He will not meet you. Jesus Christ says, draw near to God so that he may draw near to you. When you return and you do not go toward Christ, there is disappointment and despair. Or the worst of all, self-justification. 
thinking that what you do is what God wants. What you are able is what God gives you. My dear brethren, God does greater and better things that we can imagine. And the things that we can ask for. But when? According to the power of the Holy Spirit that works in us. We are not dealing with a, with a baby Jesus, with a little icon, with a little statue, with a little cross. We, have, we are having to deal with the Lord of Lords, with the Lord of Hosts. He is our friend. He is our Savior. He is our Beloved. He is the one who loves us with everlasting love. He is not a dead person, as we all are, as we were before we met Christ. He is the risen, glorious Christ Jesus. It is not accepted to be disappointed and despair. Only joy, only seeking God, because it will not be given you if you do not seek. Only to him who asks it is given. Only to him who seeks will it be revealed and found. And to him who knocks will be opened. There is no other chance, no other way. But two are the basic characteristics, that you love Christ. And if you love Christ, you love the Father and the Holy Spirit. Because Christ shows us these things. Christ teaches us the things regarding the love of God the Father. Christ is the one who teaches us the things regarding the power of the Holy Spirit. And that you seek the truth of all things. They didn't steal them from you. They didn't steal them. And people still believe that Christ was stolen. Nobody stole Christ. God raised him from the dead. Glory be to God. And this is the miracle, my dear brethren, and the message today. Even if you cannot, if you cannot believe in the risen Christ, in his love, in his grace, in his mercy, in his power, and if you're sad and disappointed, Christ loves you so much that he will come to meet you. Only be careful and pay attention to something. This is what he tells us here about the two who are returning to Amos, their village. They're walking back as if I said, as if they're saying, I went to church, nothing happened, I'm going home. I'm not going to church again. I expected God to help me and he didn't. I expected him to save me and he didn't. I expected him to put my life in order and he didn't. These are the lies of the devil. Christ loves you, and he will come, even in your return, to meet you. Only let us be careful, my dear brethren. The message of the gospel. Truly, they returned sad and disappointed as they were. But Christ loves them. He understands their weakness, as he understands our weakness. And he stands before them. And he walks with them. How nice it is. Christ is with you always. He's walking with you. Start discussing with him. What is prayer? Prayer is a discussion with Christ. Start discussing with him. Don't talk with yourself and with your heart that will make you disappointed and desperate. Start talking with Christ who will give you power and hope. And he starts talking with them. He says, why are you sad? When I read this, it was as if God was speaking to me. Why are you sad and disappointed? What's going on? And immediately they bring forth from their heart the things that they, they keep in there. What, don't you know anything, they said? Don't you know what's going on? Don't you know why I'm sad? No, why? How can you know? You're just a man. <coughs> tell me, tell me, tell me, he said to them. Didn't you hear about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a mighty man and deed, a prophet before God? 
he stood and and he, and all the people were proud of him and all we all hoped that he was going to redeem Israel Israel but the chief priests and our rulers arrested him they condemned him and they crucified him and killed him and we well were done you're not dealing with a man here you're dealing with the risen, risen Christ that will never he never ends my dear brother the love of Christ never ends love life with Christ never ends and they continue not only that but today it's the third day and certain women asto astonished us because they said that they went uh, at the tomb early and they didn't find his body and they saw a vision of angels you know silly stuff who said that he's alive but he's dead they don't believe a thing but also some of us they went Peter and John and they saw the tomb that it was empty the tomb was empty angels said that he's not dead but he's alive what else should he do for you and they were filled with sorrow as if uh, like me oh Lord what's going on and I whine and I complain what's wrong my son once I was praying for my children I said Lord my children my children keep them with you my children my children what's wrong he said my kids Lord as long as you take care of my children I'll take care of your children he said came to my senses and I so beautiful this is and you know my dear brethren I didn't raise my children and that is why I'm grateful to God I offered them nothing except the church that is everything everything I leave in the morning at 8 and then come home at 1130 all day long at church at work then at night at church Sunday and Saturday what could I offer to my children the beginning of my faith for the first three and a half years I was in Angu as well and Anna was doing everything no Christ was doing everything if I was waiting for Anna to do things Christ did it all amen Christ is the one so why are you sad he can do all things the things that you're thinking of and are disappointed are foolish no it's not foolish but they're small they're, they're tiny before the mighty God it is a mountain that appears so big to you but do you know the mighty hand of God I remember once I was praying for another issue that was very difficult for me and I was so disappointed because it couldn't be solved and God brought me into a trance and I saw a big mountain standing before me it was it was made out of of rubbish and I said, how am I going to get over this trash? I tried to, to climb it, but it was impossible. It was too difficult. I went to the right. It had no end. I went to the left. No end. So I was this little tiny human being standing in front of this mountain. I could see myself from far away. And I said, Lord, what am I going to do now? And then I said, Lord, what can you do? And I saw this mighty hand, this huge hand. I saw myself tiny in front of this mountain. And I saw this big hand coming in front of me pushed the mountain away and he told me pass through do you realize whom we're dealing with the mighty hand of God the hand of God the power of God these are not silly things we are not dealing with theology which isn't bad we're not dealing with theories which aren't bad but we are dealing here with a risen Jesus Christ who is alive and lives and reigns and he is almighty and he is the Lord of all hosts in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Nobody can touch you because Jesus Christ loves you. The question is, do you love him? Do you care about the truth? This is the question. Everything else is so easy. It's so simple that it becomes a lot more simple when you believe, when you hope. Everyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. Whoever hopes in him will never be put to shame. Whoever calls upon the name of Christ will definitely be saved. It is written, and the Bible cannot be broken. 
Only fear not. This is the problem. Fear. Doubt. Unbelief. Agony and worry. Fear not, but believe only. Believe in Him, the risen one who is sitting next to you and He's walking with you. Speak to Him. <laughs> Talk with Him. Ask Him. Let, let, leave people be. They can't do anything. They can't help you. They're small people of like suffering. You can't help you. I can't help you. Nobody can help you. Only Jesus Christ. Man Christ Jesus, the risen one, the son of the living God. And when they told them whatever they had in their heart, their disappointment, their despair, their doubts, he told them, O oh, foolish and slow of heart, that you cannot believe in the written word of God. And this is the great secret. Don't believe except in the written word of God. No matter what happens, open the word of God. It is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. And it passes to the division of the soul, what you want, and of the spirit, what you think. He divides this, the word of God. The word of God is powerful. Oh, foolish and slow in heart, can you not believe in the written word of God? Okay, you don't believe the angel, you don't believe in angels, it's okay. You don't believe the testimonies of men, you believe nothing, okay, whatever, I accept it. But the word of God, can't you believe in the word of God? Can't you believe in the living word of God that it is active and power? active and mighty and powerful and acts upon anyone who believes it? Can't you believe in the word of God? You foolish ones and slow in heart. And not with anger, as I'm angry now, but with patience and much love. He began speaking to them about the word of God, through the word of God, about his resurrection. He started from Moses. He went on to the prophets. He went to the, to the Psalms. He said, Didn't you, don't you see that he had to be crucified, that he had to die so that God may be able to raise him up, so that he may be present at all times, so that he may receive the promise of the Father and give it to you? Don't you understand that he had to die so he can be glorified, that he had to die so he can be sent by God to all and always? And the message of the person, Jesus of Nazareth, set their hearts on fire. Their heart was consumed. They realized how foolish they were to not believe in the word of God. They said, it's written, and we're not believing it. It is written, but we believe it. It's written. It's written, and you cannot cancel the Bible. It is very important for you to snatch a, a verse from the Word of God and hold on to it. You'll never fall. If you hold on to men, onto your own opinion, your own ambitions, your own thoughts, the cares of your life, your own struggle, you will fall. Take the Word of God and hold on to it. And when they reached their village and their home, our Lord pretended to go further away. Why did he pretend? Because he wanted to see that they want to continue with the word. This is the message, my brethren. We've come to this point. Do we want to continue with the word of God in our way, in our course, in our house, at home, out of our home? Do we want to continue with the word of God or do we want to continue with our own life, with our whining, with our thoughts, with our despair, with our crying, with our misery, with our wretchedness. There is a way, the way that's called the Word of God. Do you want to continue with the Word of God? You will be blessed. Do you want to continue with your thoughts, with your complaint, with your despair, with your 
Imagine how their face would have been, sad and disappointed, a horrible and ugly face. But they were willing, and this is the secret, they wanted to continue with the Word of God. If they told him, okay, go, we'll think about it, they would never see him risen. They'd stay at home in their misery and in their, their despair. But because they desired the Word of God, because they loved the Word of God, do you love the Word of God? <clears throat> it's the most important thing, my brethren. This is the secret of the Christian. He loves the Word of God. He hopes in the Word of God. He, base, he supports himself on the Word of God. He desires the Word of God. Not books and novels, the life of the saints and, and all these theological books. They offer nothing. Why? Because they are the works of men. They can't offer you anything. Just an emotional ex excitement that will slowly fade. It's like a light, it will just, it's like a firecracker, it will light up and then it will fade. What can offer you everything is the Word of God, the divinely inspired Word of God, because it's not a work of men, it is a divine work. God wrote His Holy Word and He sent it to us, into our hearts, into our life. Come stay with us, but they didn't know Him. He, they don't care about who he is. They, they're not calling this man who was spoken to them on the road for no other reason except for the word of God that he knew. Come and continue to speak to us about the word of God. And this is our weapon, my dear brethren. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Come. He pretended, but he wanted. He wanted what? He wanted the seeking. He wanted, Christ wanted you to seek. And he wanted to come to your house, to your life, to your heart, to your job, to your sadness and everything. But he wants you to call him, not to call him once. And they pressured him and they said, what? Come, come. No, I got to go. No, come, come. No, I'm going further. Come. This is what Christ wants. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. He's not coming with the first time. He may not come with the second time. He'll come the seventh time, like he went to Elijah. He prayed seven times, like Naaman. Seven times, dip yourself in the, in the waters. Ask. And they persuaded him. And to what people say, pull me even if I'm crying. He wanted to come with them more so he can reveal their, his resurrection to them. <coughs> but he would never go with them unless they pressured him and told them, Come, 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 come to my house and stay with me. And with excuses, Oh, it's night time. The day is spent. Come, you can't walk around in the night. And they found excuses so they can pressure him. Why? Because they wanted to hear the word of God. He offered them nothing else. He told them nothing else. He showed them no, who he didn't show them who he was. And when he went in, they were so happy because of the word of God that they told him, "Come, let's eat, and then we'll continue talking about the word of God." And there at the table, with the courage of a master, he took the bread and he took it to break it and give it. And they possibly saw his hands that had the holes in them. Their eyes were opened because until that moment, their eyes were shut so that they don't know, don't know who he truly was. And they saw that it was Christ. And as soon as they saw him risen, he vanished. His trip with him was over. Now they know that he is risen. And they will travel for the rest of their life and all eternity, not with the one that they see, but the one they believe. Glory be to God. Their mission is over. They believed in the resurrection. Now they're on fire. Their heart burned. They said, what are we doing here? Let's go back to Jerusalem. Let's go with the rest of our brothers. Shouldn't we rest? Shouldn't we sleep? Well, if your heart gets on fire, you'll never stop. Only with your brethren you want to be. Amen. Only with your brothers. Amen.
Yes, Lord. And in nighttime, another 11 kilometers at night, two and a half hours of walking, approximately. They got there. It was night. They went to the house where the 11 were, were assembled, the Word of God says, even though Thomas wasn't there, but he says the 11 as if he were the disciples and those who were with them, the women, and they were discussing. Mary Magdalene says, I saw him risen. Peter said, I saw him risen. The other said, yeah, right. And the two came in and they said, we saw him risen. We went home. We came back again. And he, he, he's alive. And now there was a this, uh, convent, contention among them. And then suddenly the Lord appears. Fear and trembling. Just imagine if we open our eyes and see him here or there, next to us, wherever he may be. He's everywhere. Oh, it's a ghost. And the Lord is so sweet. He said, peace be to you. Don't be afraid. I give you my peace. Don't be afraid. I am not a ghost. I am not a spirit. Here, touch my hands and see the marks of the nails. My feet have the marks of the nails. It is, it is I. I am he. And they were so happy, but they still doubted him. But they've come into the road of faith and to confirm them and assure them, said, do you have any food here? And said, yes, we have some, some broiled fish and some honeycomb. Honeycomb. And he said, bring it here. And he took it and he ate with them. And they saw him eating. Does the risen Christ eat? He doesn't need to eat. But if he wants, he can. So he can help men believe. And when every doubt departed, and Lord Jesus, we want all doubt to leave our soul. All doubt. Amen, my brethren? All doubt. We want to have faith that the risen Christ is next to me, inside me. I am in Him. He loves me. I love Him. And He has taken charge of my life. He has taken charge of my family. But let us help him take care of our family. Let us not be, let's not have differences. If I, if I fight with my wife, whom will the go, Lord go with, my wife or me? But if we're beloved with my wife and love, whom will Christ will go with? He will go with both. With whining, with complaints, with, with fighting, with foolishness, the presence of God leaves but with humility and love and t tenderness and a spiritual embrace, Christ comes. God is love, my brethren. Christ dwells only in the place where there is love. God is light. If there is darkness, Christ cannot come. You send him away. For that reason, my dear brethren, let us love one another fervently from a clean heart, from a pure conscience, from faith without hypocrisy, because this is the end of the message. This is what God wants. Why? So that Christ may be able to dwell among us. Forget about the whining. Forget about the mistakes. Forget about the, the things that you lack. Don't take them into account, not even for yourself, because Christ forgives you, but nor for other men, because God, Christ forgives him as well. The blood of Christ cleans us from all sin, all of us. Cleans it from all sin. Cleans us from all sin. And if Christ forgives me, why don't you? And if Christ forgives you, how can I not forgive you? May Christ be with us. Let us not grieve Him. With our words, with our thoughts. You know what it means for me to sit around and say, you know what that meant? That doesn't mean I'll tell Him and I'll show Him. Christ leaves. But when I see my brother and I say, this is such a good brother. He's very good. Okay, he made a mistake. I make more. Lord bless him more than me. Just imagine if I fight with my wife from morning till dawn, from night till dawn, the other way around. How can Christ stay with us? But when I love Anna, Christ loves her as well. And when Anna loves me, they love me. 
Christ loves us. This is the right way to do it. That we love one another fervently from a clean heart, without complaint, without any thought. So we, we have our differences. So what? Throw it away, cast it away. Christ will make us agree. Do we believe it? Do we agree in the name of Christ? If we agree in the name of Christ, Christ will cover everything else. For that reason, let us leave today joyfully and rejoicing because Christ is almighty. And after dining, he said, come now, let me tell you. And he began speaking to them again about the written word of Moses, of the prophets, of the psalmists. But it's not only that he spoke to them. He opened their mind so that they may understand the scriptures. Oh my, this is our Lord. It's not only that he reveals this to us, but he makes us understand the things that he reveals to us. He reveals his word to us, his plan. He reveals his love. He reveals his person, his resurrection, the power of his resurrection. And he explains to them, this is how it had to be. The Christ had to suffer so he can be raised from the dead. And this, my dear brethren, let us remember it. This is how it had to be. Christ had to suffer so he can be raised from the dead. This is what must happen with us. We must suffer so we can be raised from the dead. It can't be without trials, without temptations, without afflictions. The road is difficult and the path is narrow, but that is what leads to the kingdom of heaven. There is, of course, the broad gate. I fight with my wife and I never speak to her for one month. Nothing. I'll sit here and she'll sit there. When I see him, I'll just see her, I'll just turn my back. That's easy. You know how easy it is to do it? Yeah, but that's the broad gate. It will lead to perdition. I'm not going to talk to you today. I'll talk to you the day after. I've heard this. Not even from tomorrow. No, the day after tomorrow. That's when I'm going to start speaking to you again. This is the broad gate. But there is a narrow way. I will humble myself first. I will humble myself and go and ask forgiveness. But I did nothing. Why? Must you do something so you can ask forgiveness? Go and ask forgiveness so you can help the other love you and come close to you. Ask forgiveness. Say it's my fault because it is our fault. Is there anyone who isn't, it isn't his fault? We all stumble in many things. So soon I ask forgiveness, you know how easy it is for me to ask for, to say I'm sorry? It was difficult for me to learn this. It was difficult. But she, I saw the good results in asking forgiveness. The beginning of our faith, you most know this story. A brother came in our house and we, we had such a great argument. I said this, the other, oh, we were fighting. As soon as we started eating, Anna went in one room and I went in the other. I was a believer and I went and knelt and I said, Lord, tell her to come and ask, say she's sorry. Tell her now to come and tell me she's sorry. You know I'm right. And I heard the voice of God. Go. You may make it in time. There. I lost it. I was kneeling, on, I was on my knees, but I, I, I melted. I said, I'm making it in time. Is the rapture and I'm dying? What's going on? I was terrified. And the door opened and Anna came in and said, George, I'm sorry. And I realized how important it is for you to make it in time to say you're sorry because you will receive the blessing of God. Today we will all live with, leave with love in our heart and we will all be forgiven by one another. Not I forgive you, but do you forgive me? And if you forgive me, I'll forgive you. Amen. We will all leave happy and forgiven, not as people say. <laughs> we'll be forgiven from the Lord today. Amen. All of us. We will all love one another. Do you love your brother? Do you love them all? Raise your hand. Do you love them all? Your wife and your husband and your mother-in-law. Everyone, do you love them? Then praise God. We're going to go to heaven and Christ is among us, my dear brethren. But we must love them all. Amen. And in the end, he told them, 
Now this gospel must be preached for the repentance. What is the purpose of the gospel? Repentance. The gospel must be preached unto repentance. This is the target. And Christ is, preaches this gospel to us so we can repent. And if we repent, remission of sins will come. And when this remission of sins comes, whatever you ask, you shall receive. Ask and you shall receive so that your joy may be complete. Why? Because the gospel brings us into repentance and repentance through remission of sins. And we want this.